Now that our fuel needs are all taken care of, it's time to get started on our maul. And that means we need to mine the iron, copper, melt it into ingots, and then produce components and stuff. Oh, yes, belts, machines, stuff everywhere. That's going to be a mess, and we're going to love it. All right, so I was looking around. I was trying to figure out how I wanted to do this, where I wanted to put everything. And while uh, there's no definitive perfect answer, we have our fuel. We could send fuel off over here to this copper. We could send fuel off over here to this iron node. Or I was thinking, since there's a copper node down here in this little groove, we might be able to dig around this, dig it out, and then dig a hole, and then dig that, dig that way to the west and kind of meet up with the iron node that's over here. That way we can have all of our ore come into like a little area back here and then we can smelt it. And that way we can send the fuel to one spot. Maybe we just send the fuel either that way or this way and then it'll meet up and everything. And that way we can have all of our ingots together instead of having to bring them across to each other. Maybe, depending on how much room we take to build our components, we can either build our mall here or we can dig up the area that way towards the next terminal to build our mall. So I think that's what we're going to do. So I say we're going to get started. I'm going to take out these machines to start. We're going to get rid of this. Devs, I need, a, I need an ability to delete items. That'd be great. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to dig out this iron node first. We're going to see how big it is and how many miners we can get around it. I think we only need eight miners. I'm going to go for about 120 ore per minute on both of them. But we're going to dig out this... This one and that uh, copper node down there, and we're going to see where we can start meeting up. So I'm going to get started on that, and I'll see you in a second. So I got the iron node dug out uh, about as carefully as I could. I didn't want to... Uh Go too crazy on it, but it's pretty, pretty big. I think we have a lot of room. If we were to uh, try to put miners down, we can see that we have lots of spots for miners. I think this will fit the eight we're going to use. Not a problem, but lots of room for expansion. Now we need to go hit that copper node. All right, this copper node is actually pretty large too. You can see we can have lots and lots of spots for miners all the way around it. It's huge. So, uh, yeah. No problems there. Now the point we need to do is connect these two so we can have a little smelting room. And I think we'll start up here since this is the higher level. And I think if we look at the map that I just did you can see the copper room there on the right and we just need to go a little bit forward and then we'll connect it maybe that empty spot right there in the middle will be a i don't know we'll just connect it somehow obviously it's hard to undo it once we've deformed this land too much but uh, i think uh or we could just do it right in here oh let's just clear this space out i think this will be a perfect perfect spot that way it's close to our main room yeah, I think we'll just do it uh, a little bit in this area here. We'll just bring the copper in from over there and we'll do all our smelting somewhere in this area. And that's that way we can see it from our main room. It'll be nice. All right. I think this room should work for our smelting purposes. We'll lay some uh, power floors down, smooth everything out, deal with the bumps. And I think we'll bring in our copper from back here somewhere. So we'll just go this way a little bit and our copper line can come in from there. So let me lay some flooring down and we'll see how it looks. Need some light, but I think our machines will provide some and we can add some uh, candlesticks as well. It'll, that'll take care of that. But this will work. I think we'll be able to fit the six, two rows of six. Something like, uh, something like this. See, and then we can do that twice. Just need to make sure we have room for everything. That way, maybe we could do, see our copper out on this line. And our iron out on this line. And then the fuel, which will come from somewhere, which will probably go past, 
we'll probably have the fuel come this way and then around for our miners. Um, I just put that miner there to make sure that I had room between the smelters and the miner. So we'll probably have fuel come this way. Either that, if we want to have just one long line of fuel, we could have it come this way. It'll work itself out. We can use splitters. So we could have the fuel come off. Like this. And then the miners... Because it'll be feeding miners. And then the ore can come in and turn right. And actually, no. I don't want that. I don't want that. I don't want to use the long inserter for the ore. I need to make sure that we get good. So, this needs to be the ore line. If we raise our fuel line up, like on this, it doesn't have to be here, but we can bring it up like this. And then from here, it can just come down, split, feed our machines, and then continue this way where it will come down the back of this one and then be sent off to the copper miners over that way. In this case then, I think we're gonna need just some inserters. So this one's gonna output here. This will output here. I'll just repeat down the line. So if you're wondering why I'm doing six smelters, it's just for the numbers, I'm not focused as much on the numbers for a mall. It's just not that important. But I did check. I want at least about 120 iron ingots per minute. That's what I'm shooting for. And so when I did all my checks, the miners I talked about previously seem to do about 16.5 or per minute. I don't know if that's exact, but that's what I've just come up to. And so I'm going to need eight miners to at least hit 120. That'll be 132, but I'm not worried about it. And then these seem to do about 21 iron ingots per minute. I don't know why 21, but that's what I keep coming to every time I timed it. Uh, maybe it's 20, but I, I swear it's 21. Um, so that means that I need at least... Uh, six to hit the 120 that I'm looking for. So that's, so we'll have eight eight miners, the six smelters. That'll give us the 120 we want. And we'll be good. And for the copper ore, it's going to come in. We'll have to deal with this, but uh, it's going to come in here and come down this way to the end. And this way we'll do just regular inserters again. And then for all the... for all the fuel... We'll use long inserters, which will be totally fine. All right, and that should handle our smelting needs. Now we just got to get the uh, the ore act the the actual ore in here. We'll add just for the same kind of decoration. We'll just add a terminating block there. I think that looks good. We can always add some light source if we wanted to, brighten it up a little bit. Okay, now to get the miners down, I'm just going to throw down eight miners here, and then I'm going to do eight miners over on the copper. Before I do that, let me dig my tunnel. And then we'll have the ore come in from here. Perfect. And our fuel will uh, just repeat the process. Like that. Whether that works out perfectly in the end, I uh, don't know. But walkway-wise, it means that we have a almost clear path from here, although these are probably going to intersect, so I should not worry too much about walkways. But this will work. So we're all set up for smelters. Let me go get miners on each section, and we will get our mall started. All right, I think this will work. I got uh, at least eight miners. I had to get a little creative in this corner for making sure that it got fuel by having a long inserter pull from here and put on this tiny belt for this long inserter. Uh, if it doesn't work, we'll just move this one. Uh, these two are collecting fuel from the same spot. Eh, it'll be fine. We'll find out. This one got a little interesting. I was testing the miners just to make sure they would work, and uh, they worked. Uh, they crossed over a little bit weirdly, but uh, the game will let me do it, so uh, I'll allow it. The main thing I need to do here is make sure that I get fuel in from somewhere over here. All right, so I think this is what we'll do is we'll have uh, the belt come out of here for the fuel. It'll just come up here. I may turn this into a belt spiral a little later, but for now, it's just easy. The way we can focus <laughs> on our actual factory. And then we'll just run it along here. I'm going to delete a few of these after I do it so I don't have them sticking in the way. And we'll run it all the way down here. And we'll come down somehow. Not that we need to go up there, but it'll work. And 
then I think what I'll do is delete this stuff and our and our and our little lovely gate still looks still looks fine doesn't look deformed and then we can do the same thing up here with the little support structures There we go. Okay, so that'll work, and then I'll add a couple of more of those, maybe one down here, and we'll, we'll worry about that a little later. I'll decorate that later. All right, that is done. Again, I just did a quick ramp. Um, I'll, if I want to later, I'll convert this to a, some sort of little spiral or something. But for testing purposes now, to stay focused, that will just work fine. So let's go uh, export some fuel and see if everything turns on correctly. And we are starting up. This is perfect. Now it's going to take a little while for our, or not that long, but it'll take just a little bit of time for all of our fuel to get all these machines, which I think is fine. So what we're going to do is go ahead and get started on getting those uh, copper miners going. All right. And just like that, we have our iron and copper done. Stage one completed. We are running on flower power and we are good to go. The next part is going to be all electrical, which is going to be assemblers and assemblers and more assemblers. Now, time to get started on the main part of the factory. So let's, uh, let's clear this place out and turn this into this. Now that we have a nice, big, clean room for work with, we can start building components. What I think we're going to do is I've brought the copper and iron out a little bit. I think what we're going to do is I'm going to send the copper down this way. We're going to put these right next to each other so we can build a bunch of copper components right next to each other. Okay, so very quickly we're going to cover this. Uh, all of the intermediate parts, the stuff you see on the screen, inside the assembler, all of them have six second cycles, which means that in order to get the items per minute, all we have to do is say 60 seconds divided by six seconds gives us 10 cycles a minute. So in order to figure out the numbers, all we got to do is multiply the inputs and outputs by 10 and that gives us the items per minute. Super easy on this stuff. As an example, we'll look at the mechanical components inside an assembler. We can see at the bottom, it takes one copper ingot and one iron components in order to create four mechanical components. So in order to get our numbers, we can just multiply those inputs and outputs by 10, giving us 10 copper ingots per minute and 10 iron components per minute as input. And for the output, we would get 40 mechanical components per minute. If the output doesn't have a multiplier on it, that just means it outputs a single item per cycle. Keep in mind, this game is still an alpha, which means these numbers are subject to change whenever an overworked developer falls asleep and its head hits the keyboard wrong. So what we're going to do here at the front of the line is we're going to be making copper components. We're going to make two of those. That'll make 20 per minute. And then copper wire will do two of those, which will make 60 per minute. And that's using a total of 40 copper. And then here we're going to do mechanical components. So actually, I think we'll do three of the mechanical components, which you need a lot of mechanical components. I wanted to do more. I'm going to leave a spot for it later if I need to add another one, but I think right here. All right, so I moved this up just a little bit. I'm going to do the same thing. So again, we're going to do two, two, and then we're going to do at least three mechanical components. And then I want to do... I'm going to leave one extra spot for another mechanical components, and I want to do the electric components right here with this machine. So we'll run this down here. And I only moved all this because these stairways are right here, and you can't delete the stairways because they come with the, the map. <laughs> so no big deal, and somehow I moved these wrong. So we don't have copper frames here, and that's simply because we don't need them except for crank generators and accu accumulators. And we will build them, but we don't need them very much. So I want them kind of at the end of the line so they're not sucking up copper for the stuff that we're actually going to use. So we'll put them somewhere somewhere else with the leftovers. The copper frames are the only thing that they need. And copper frames need like 40. One, one, one machine needs like 40 per minute to produce 10 copper frames per minute. So yeah, it'll just abuse up uh, the, the copper when we don't need it. If we were able to control how much we stored in a container, then it wouldn't be as much of a big deal. But since we can't control how much spots in a container will take up, it'll just keep producing tons of them. And I, I'd rather that just 
stay at the end. You can have the leftovers. We're going to do the iron components over here. These containers are just some leftovers that I had. We'll bring the iron all the way up here. Like so. For the iron, we only have iron frame and iron component, so we have less to deal with when it comes to iron. There's other stuff to do, like the processor unit we'll need iron for. Also, for foundations and stairs, we'll need uh, iron, but we also need wire for that. So, we're going to put iron components over here, which is perfect. It lines up with that one. So what I think we'll do is we'll do iron... We'll do at least four sets of iron components. Maybe five. We need it for a lot of stuff. You know what? I'm just going to do five. That was my original plan. And then... For the iron frame... We're just going to do... One... This guy doesn't... isn't necessary. Now's where the spaghetti begins. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Alright, so we have five doing iron components. One guy doing iron frames. Which is 40 per minute, so we put the fast inserter on there, which should be able to handle it. And we need to get a chunk of these iron components over to these mechanical component buildings. So we're going to have to start our spaghetti, so we'll at least have a belt here for output. Actually, you know what? I want to turn this around. Alright, so I flipped the belt. So we're going to actually go... Because this one's going to have an output probably like this. I don't know where we're going to go with it. But at least with this, we can go up. And we'll bring this down here. Up and over. We might split it or do something with it. We might reverse this around. I'm not 100% sure yet, but hopefully this long inserter will be enough at 10 per minute. I hope it can do it. Uh, we'll have to uh, spaghetti these belts around some way. Once we get a little further along, we'll see. Why is this here? You don't need to be here. All right, uh, it's a little cramped, but I think we're gonna, what we're gonna have to do for the electrical components and process unit, I think is going to be here in the middle which we'll do maybe like here. This is just to make sure we have enough belt room. Surprisingly enough, we gotta daisy chain this stuff. So, we only need our plant matter fiber for the electrical components. Only needs, needs 30 plant matter per minute. So we're gonna do it right here. And then we'll just use a fast inserter like this. And this should give us, this should give us what we need. Now, we don't need plant matter for any, plant matter fiber for anything else that I'm aware of. So this should be all the plant matter fiber we need. And then that plant matter fiber can go straight into the electrical component. We can just use an inserter. And we'll go straight into here. And this one's going to produce our electrical components, which needs the plant matter fiber of 10 per minute, along with one, uh, 10 copper ingots per minute, and it will actually produce 40 per minute. Bring this over like this, and like this. But we only need 10 per minute, and that should give us... That should allow us to produce 40 per minute. And we need some of that to go into here for our processor unit, which will need some iron ingots as well, as long as, as well as 20 electrical components. So what we're going to do, well, we're just going to go ahead and use fast. That way the processor units can get all it needs, but it should be half of this should be 20 per minute. So once it's saturated, fine. And then we can have uh, this come out. And it will join this lovely thing. And we'll do the opposite for this, and we'll set a uh, fast inserter as well. I don't know, hopefully it'll split correctly, but this shall give us, in theory, once it's saturated, hopefully if the machines are splitting correctly, we should get at least 20 per minute on this belt, and 20 per minute we'll be going to the other machines. If we find that one's getting starved and it's not like evenly splitting based off inserters, then we'll try to just use uh, regular inserters on either side. And so the last thing we need here is iron ingots. So spaghetti. We'll probably adjust these a little bit. Oh, no, no. That's right. <laughs> oh, goodness. What do we need? 10 per minute? 10 per minute. You know what we're going to try? I'm going to try, actually, instead of doing... Instead of coming up and over like this, I'm going to try something where I'm going to put... So we're going to come through like this. And feed this machine. And these are just going to go up and over. I, I like that better. Or this. Perfect. Just what I needed. 
And then we'll use a regular old inserter. And our iron shall be fine. This should be making 10 per minute, so an extra outserter. No, all right, so we have everything we need to start building our mall. So I did, in order to give enough copper, I needed a little bit more copper, iron. I did add one more smelter and I added one more uh, miner. So we now have nine copper miners and seven smelters, and we still have eight iron miners and six smelters. So that works out. But this will make sure that we have closer to uh, 140 uh, copper ingots, but I needed just a smidge more to support these frames the way I wanted to at least. We still need a little bit more copper ingots for, I believe, belts. So that's why we have the copper ingots here. Um, and that's gonna also need the iron components. That's why I put them right next to each other because that's the only thing that the copper has got to go for. Our iron frames are here and we're gonna need iron for, I think, platforms and stairs. That's why the iron ingots are still there. So that's everything. I extended out the platform like this just for, uh, just for a pretty shot. Um, but we'll probably cut it off here, and then all the belts will go on down to somewhere here, and we'll be spaghettiing the heck out of it to make uh, our shopping mall. And we'll do that the next episode. So, we have a massive amount of resources reporting for duty, and they're going to be all used up in the next episode. So, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.